Hello, hello, and welcome to the David Messiah YouTube channel, where our watchwords are to teach and to build, to build back up the kingdom of Zion. And my name is Sidney Thomas. I'm the founder and the moderator of this YouTube channel. Uh, the title of this presentation is the um, Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. And I'm to bring you this message um, for a couple of reasons. Number one is that um, I have been guided to, to bring you... Um, a revised Enochian calendar, which is the calendar that we, the children of Yeshara Lo, Israel, ought to be using now in these end times. And it is very important that we do so for the simple reason that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the time of the end. And of course, at the time of Noah, he was commanded to build an ark and to preach to the children of Yesharalu that they should indeed take the opportunity to come on that ark and be saved. Well, in these latter days, um, the, the sort of metaphorical Noah's ark lies in obedience to Torah. And the sort of immediate kind of uh, consequence of that is that we have to keep the set feasts, one of which, of course, is the Day of Atonement. But in order to properly keep the set feasts, it is obvious that we have to have a proper calendar to do so. And that is why he guided me in writing that book, entitled uh, Yahweh's Enochian Calendar, the purpose of which precisely was to bring back that Enochian calendar, which had to be adjusted because the Enochian calendar, as was given in the book of Enoch, um, had assumed a return cycle for the spring equinox of 364 days a year. Well, that is now 365 and a quarter days. And so there had to be guidance given as to how to change the calendar while keeping intact the basic principles which Enoch had established. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's first of all deal with the issue of the seventh month and the Day of Atonement, which is up on your screen now. For year, Enochian year 6008, Gregorian year 2022, fall uh, a season, seventh month. The first day of the seventh month was actually Thursday, September 22nd. And as I bring this to you, today is... Um, Thursday, September 29th, and the Day of Atonement is nominally the 10th day of the 7th month, which is that Shabbat day, Saturday, August the 1st. So this essentially <clears throat> is the first purpose of this uh, short video presentation, is to give you this uh, calendar and of course, later in the month, uh, on, the, on the 15th day, Thursday, October 6, starts the Feast of, of Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, that's number one. But number two, I, I must also let you to know that because the Day of Atonement, the 10th day of the seventh month, corresponding in this year to Saturday, October 1st, because it falls on a Shabbat day, which is not a day, um, the Shabbat, the weekly Shabbat is not a day that we ought to be fasting. 
while indeed the day of atonement calls for a day of affliction, which is essentially a day of fasting. I am guided that we are rather to observe the day of atonement on the 11th day of the seventh month, which is the following day, Sunday, October the 2nd. Okay, now we, 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 we also, even though it is not there in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, which gives the law for the keeping of the, of the um, first day of the seventh month, which was the day of trumpets, the tenth day of the seventh month, which is the day of atonement, um, it does not mention the ten days of awe, which are, which, which are now traditionally kept. Uh, and would be the, from the first day of the seventh month through to the tenth day. And in, in those days of awe, we are already to be afflicting our souls in one form or fashion. So what I have been doing is essentially carrying out a fast, each, each one of those ten days, but a fairly light fast, from sun up to sundown, which for me, um, he's given me leave to do that essentially from 7 a.m. in the morning until 5.30 p.m. in the evening. But it's not a dry fast, it's a wet fast, so I can drink as much water as I want during the day. Well, for the Day of Atonement, um, uh, uh, where we are to afflict our souls, my plan is to do the same but to make it a dry fast, and on the Shabbat day, um, uh, not to fast at all. Okay, so so that's that's the second purpose of this of this uh, presentation now fulfilled. Day of Atonement. Nominally, the Saturday, uh, October first, the tenth day of the month, seventh month. Uh, but because it's a Shabbat day, not to make it a day of affliction as required but rather to do that on Sunday, October 2nd, which is for, for this year, the 11th day of the 7th month. Okay, but I'm also um, to let you know what it is and why it is that you should be um, looking essentially at this Enochian calendar. Because many people have been following the sort of Jewish lead in this regard. And the Jewish lead, as you all would know, requires the prior sighting of the crescent moon, which is called in, in the Hebrew the Rosh Kodesh. Okay? Sort of, um, well, I won't bother to try to, the head, the head of the month, essentially, is what that is saying. But we are given in the book of Jubilees, and it was also there in the book of Enoch, where Enoch gave us the Enochian calendar, that we are not to observe the moon for purposes of determining the, the new month days of the Hebrew calendar. And the sort of evidence for that is here at Jubilees chapter 6, verses 36 to 37 in the middle of the page, which let me read. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, <clears throat> ten days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day and they will confound all the days, the Kodesh and the unclean, Kodesh being holy, set apart, with the unclean and the unclean day with the set apart days. For they will go wrong as to the months and Shabbats and feasts and jubilees. The point here to note is that there is such a thing as an abominable day. 
Because one of the things that, um, and it's there in the book, the Yahweh's Enochian calendar, one of the things that Enoch let us know very, very clearly, that each season is led by a spirit. So it is not by any means an arbitrary thing. Each season is led by a spirit. Each month is led by a spirit. Each week is led by a spirit. Each day is led by a spirit. And all the feast days are on days which are clearly Kodesh, holy days, not abominable days. And so if one is following a calendar wherein prior observation of the crescent moon is the basis upon which the first day of the new month is determined, then you are going to be making this error that 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 was warned about here at Jubilees chapter 6. And he let me to know very, very clearly that no, we do not need to look at the moon at all for purposes of determining the annual Hebrew calendar. Yes, the moon is there for signs and it's there for other things. I'm not saying that the moon is, is, is completely, you know, unnecessary. I live in a village here called Grand Riviere in Trinidad, which is a, you know, it's a far-flung kind of a country village. There are farmers all around. And let me tell you, they know when to plant because they don't plant at the wrong moon. If you plant at the wrong moon, then <laughs> you, you're not going to get a crop. And, and the fisher folk also, they know about, about these things. Okay, so the moon is very important. I, I'm not going to, to, to gain say that, but not for the purpose of the annual Hebrew calendar. That's number one. And I will get some, uh, I'll give some further sort of synopsis as to the basis upon which the proper Enochian calendar is, is set. But first, let me also make reference to the, to the year count. The year count, as I have been given, we are now in year 6008. We are already into the seventh millennium. And there has been a tarrying, so nothing really started until um, year 6005, which corresponded to Gregorian year, what is it, we are now 6008. So that would have been three years ago. So, so that would have been 2019. And the start of the Enochian New Year, that year would have been Sunday, March 24th, 2019. That would have corresponded to the first day of the New Year, that year according to God's calendar. Not according to any sighting of the crescent moon. Why? Because the first day of every new year is always the day after the spring equinox. That is the empirical reference point. During the time of Enoch, it was a 364-day return cycle for that spring equinox. So you would have counted 364 days, starting with the first day of the new year. On the 364th day, you would have had the return of the spring equinox, and then the day after that would have been the start of a new year. Very simple. So the year would then have been divided up into 52 weeks, each of seven days the seventh day in each week being the Shabbat. Seven times 52 is 364. There would have been exactly four quarters corresponding to the four seasons. And each season would have had 91 days exactly. Four by 91 is 364. And each season, each season, each quarter would have been divided into three months. 
the first month of the season being 30 days, the second month of the season being 30 days, and the third month of the season being 31 days. 30 plus 30 plus 31 is 91 days for each season. And guess what? You would have counted at the start of the first season, spring. All you have to do is count 91 days, and that 91st day would be the summer solstice. The day after that would be the first day of the second season, which is summer. And then again you count 91 days, which would bring you exactly to the fall equinox. The day after that would be the start of the fall season. And a new spirit would come, the spirit of fall would come to lead that season. And then you count another 91 days would bring you to the winter solstice. The day after that would be would, would, would see the, the, the arrival of the winter spirit, the spirit of winter. And then you count 91 days, you come back to the spring equinox. And the day after that would be the start of a new year. And so the cycle went. But we are no longer on a return cycle of 364 days. We are now on a return cycle of 365 days normally. But every fourth year it is a return cycle of 366 days. And there is a rule for that, the, 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 the 366 day years are also years which are for divisible. So this year 6008 is a four divisible year and so it is a year of 366 days for the return cycle of the spring equinox. Such years are actually called tripartite years. Because it is four, sorry, three times 122 um, gives you 366. So the 366 day years can be divided into three equal parts. So they are tripartite years, which is a term that is used in, in, in a Buddhist prophecy for, for the return of the future Buddha. But that's another story, but I mention it only because people have not understood what was meant by that term, a tripartite year, and so have not been able properly to decode that future Buddha prophecy. Well, there is a section in the book, The Coming of David Messiah, where indeed I was well able to decode that future Buddha prophecy. But that's to one side. So if every four years it's a 366 day year, and otherwise it's a 365 day year, then on average, the return cycle is 365 and a quarter days. So this is where we are now. And what happened, it became a, 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 a day was added at the time of the flood. And then at the time of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, another day was added to make it 366 days every fourth year. And so the Enochian calendar needed to be adjusted only for those two changes. But because of the, of the sort of... Um, non-arbitrariness of the calendar in terms of the coming of the seasons. If you were following a 364-day year, when in fact it's now a 365-day year, and, and, or rather I should say a 365 and a quarter day year on average, 
then if you follow the 364 day yeah you would gradually go out of sync with the seasons and that is when sort of the invitation so to say was taken to you say to say well you know what let's let's go by this sighting of the moon and then you have a leap month every so often and so uh, on the jewish calendar it's usually 12 months in a year but every so often you need to add a 13th month because that way also you would no longer be in sync with the actual coming of the seasons. And that is just going completely off. Now I have been given the authority to say, as that David Messiah, that this is wrong. The rabbis have got it wrong. And I don't mince words when I say so. And I don't even talk about the Gregorian calendar used by the Christians. That is also wrong. Why? Because you can't even find the feast days that we are to keep as is necessary to get on to the proverbial Noah's Ark in these latter days. Because it's not, they're not, the feast days are not shown. The hidden. And that's why I had to prepare that calendar showing the correspondences between what is there yeah between between pardon me this this is a very slow um, yes. So we have we have this uh, table of correspondences showing yes showing the Enochian year and next to it the corresponding Gregorian calendar as shown here. Okay. So. What was the guidance I was given? The guidance I was given was that when the 365th day was added after the flood, the relevant question to ask, well, where does that day go when you consider that it is not an arbitrary thing because each season is led by a spirit? And having been given Urim, I could pose the question and get a precise answer. And the answer given was that that extra day went into the first season, the first quarter, the spring quarter. So that the spring quarter became always now 92 days instead of the original 91 days. So that at the, at the start, and I'll just go here to show you, for this year, 6008, these are the first three months of the spring quarter. Okay, so the first month, as you can see, is 30 days. It started on March the 23rd. First month after 30 days ended Thursday, April 21st. But now the second month is not 30 days, as was, would have been in the time of Enoch. The second month is 31 days. So that extra day became a 31st day in the second month. And the third month, as before, remained at 31 days. So that now, uh, since the flood, when we start right after the spring equinox, for the first day of the year, we now count 92 days. So this year it would have been starting Wednesday, March 23rd, which takes us to Wednesday, June 22nd. That would be 92 days. 30 plus 31 is 61 plus 31 is 92. And the day following would be the first day of the second season, which is summer. 
But as you can see here, the, se the, the, the second season, summer, the second month of the second season is only 30 days. Sunday, August 21 is the 30th day of the fifth month. And so that continued as before. But here now, since year 6008 is a four divisible year, four into 6008 goes evenly, one, five, oh, two times. For this fall season, the second month, the eighth month of the year, is 31 days as it was for the second month of the spring season this year. But this only happens every four divisible year. So every four divisible year, the fall season takes up 92 days, as does the spring season every year. And then if we go now to the, to the last season of this year, we are again back to a 91-day season. So this is how this is done. And if we go now to the next year, 6009, you will see for the third season, which is the fall season, the eighth month, which is the second month of the, of the fall season, is only 30 days. Okay, so that is the simple rule. But the main point is that there is no need to observe any crescent moon. This was actually remarked in the book of Acts where, you know, the, the followers of, of the goddess Diana, also known as Eostre, which is the, 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 the other way of saying Easter or Ishtar, they were observing the crescent moon. And that's why for the Muslims, you know, you have that symbol of the crescent moon and the star. This is, this is forbidden for the children of Israel. Forbidden for the reason given that each season is led by a spirit. And by the way, there are only four new month days in the year. It's not every month that we have a, a, a new month feast. The new month feasts are only kept on the first month, corresponding to the first season, which is spring. The fourth month, corresponding to the second season. The seventh month, corresponding to the fall season. And the tenth month, corresponding to the start of the winter season. And this was a law given already by or through Noah. It was not for every month, not for all twelve months. Okay, and this is a mistake I think that is made also with the Jewish calendar, this idea that every month for 12 months and sometimes 13 months in the year, the first day of the new moon day, I see one of our brethren calling it a new moon day, that that is not being a, a set as a sort of a feast day and the sort of the... the the basis for now determining the Shabbat. No, the Shabbat is always the seventh day, which is the Saturday, according to the Gregorian uh, way of reckoning. It's always the Saturday. Yeah, I don't change. And that is why, for example, the day of birth, so to say, of the David Messiah, which is prophesied in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 1 to 5, and in particular at verse 5, where that man-child strained to be delivered. But in, in, in verses 1 and 2, if I remember correctly, is where is given that sign of the woman clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet, 12 stars around her head, that particular astrological conjunction occurred on the first day of the seventh month. 
It was a new month day corresponding to the fall season. It was a day of trumpets. And the day of trumpet always occurs the day after the fall equinox. Always. Just as the new year and the new spring season always occurs on the day after the spring equinox. If you're going according to the sighting of the moon, that, can, that, that is a very movable sort of a feast. And as a matter of fact, if you have a 13-month year, man, it is a very, very movable feast. You understand? So that is wrong. And as that one who has been uh, 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 appointed the David Messiah, I am obliged to let you to know that. Now, what you do with that information is up to you. But when I make that statement, I am I'm not just making it out of the vanity of my own heart. I put myself under the stricture of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20, which means to say, if I lie, I die. That is what that is. So this is a serious business. And by the way, according to that same chapter uh, uh, 18 of Deuteronomy, if I come and I say I have been sent, I don't come in my own name, then he will require it of all those who hear this message that they heed that message. So it is also upon you. Now, if you have some doubt about the veracity of what I say, all I would suggest to you is that you take it to the Most High, get down on your knees and pray. If you have Urim and can use it and you've been given permission to use it, well, use it. Otherwise, get down on your knees and pray and ask the Most High to send you a sign so that you are clear as to which to follow. And if you do neither, well, that is going to be on you. And that is not a threat, <laughs> okay? My people want to take these warnings as threats. They are not threats, they are warnings. And I have been appointed a watchman. Every one of the 144,000 that have been appointed or are also appointed watchmen. And if we see a threat come from the outside, we are to blow that trumpet of warning. And if we don't blow that trumpet of warning and that threat come and take you all away because you now didn't get the message, well, now you will be taken away, but I will have to answer for not having blown that trumpet. You understand? So that's a warning, not a threat. Okay? So don't take it out of that context. Okay, so essentially that's it. Uh, I've already mentioned about um, since it is occurring on a Shabbat day to... Um, which is this coming Saturday, uh, to, here we are, since it's uh, occurring on a Shabbat day, to, to not afflict one's soul on that Shabbat day, but rather to observe it on the following day, Sunday the 11th. Now, um, I don't think there'll be, well, let me just leave it at that. This is a message I've been directed to give. I know there are many people of us who do not follow the ten days of all tradition because that is actually not in in scripture. But he let me to know that it is as good as a law because it has in a sense been hallowed now by tra the tradition of our elders. So for the first ten days of the seventh month we're supposed to be already afflicting our souls even before the Day of Atonement, the tenth day, which would normally end the ten days of awe. Okay? But again, because it's it, 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 the, the tenth of the seventh month is occurring on a Shabbat day this year, actually I am guided, and this is what I'm going to do, to, to observe the, the Day of Atonement rather on the day following, which is the eleventh day, so that it the, the other rule, which is that on the Shabbat day, one does not normally fast on such a day, okay? 
All right, so that is all I wanted to say. That is all I've been guided to say. And so with that, I give all praise, I give all glory, I give all thanks, I give all exaltation unto the Most High God, Yehawah. And to all those who are listening, thank you for doing so, and uh, shalom.